a pop-up. And if so, just click on that. And um, Kimia, I'm going to ask you to spotlight Jean so that um, so that for confidentiality reasons, everybody's face won't be on the video. So I'm just going to wait for you to do that before I kind of start the formal welcome. Ah, perfect. Uh, thank you. Um, and so with that, I, I want to welcome Jean Ward uh, to our group today. Jean is a brain wellness um, in, brain wellness program instructor with the, the Artful Living class. But Jean and I go back way back. And because Jean has worked with me on a few different initiatives with the brain wellness program, some of you might know this, but our history goes back as far as my two and a half or three year old son who took an art class with Jean. He is now 26. So it's been a long time. And then, uh, so yes, so met her there and then intersections of life reconnected later on uh, in this world, um, in, in the Parkinson's world, all of those kinds of things. And uh, we were chatting earlier today and I talked about dragging Jean along and then I changed it to, uh, what was the word I changed it to now? Inviting. <laughs> Inviting you along rather than dragging her along. Yeah. And so um, I had learned about um, flower pounding from actually my sister who had a friend who did it. And I thought, okay, this seems like a really cool um, craft idea to bring to our group. And then I had to find somebody who was going to be great at teaching us how to flower pound. And Jean came to mind and she has taken it on and uh, has agreed has immersed herself in flower pounding <laughs> and has agreed to, to share with us a little bit about flower pounding. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Jean. Thank you, Elaine. Life has not been the same when it comes to flowers since that initial conversation that you and I had. After um, she introduced it to me, I went online to find out what in the world it was and I attempted to pick a couple of my geraniums and um, other flowers that were growing in my garden. And I, I got some watercolor paper out, dug out a hammer and started pounding. But I wasn't really that, you know, it was like, okay, it didn't turn out that nicely. But, you know, I found that from that point on though, whenever I was out for a walk, I would be looking at flowers going, Hmm, I wonder what you would look like if I pounded you. And ooh, what about that leaf? Ooh, I I have it just sort of shifted the way I looked at nature, how I look at flowers. And I was actually absolutely amazed when I did some research to find out how many types of species of flowers there are in the world. And there are over 400,000 of flowers. Now, if I were to just ask you, what are some of your favorite flowers? I'm sure the, the most common ones would be like roses and daisies and sunflowers, petunias, um, poppies, uh, carnations, uh, lilies, and that's probably about the extent of the names of flowers that I have. But I'm sure when you think about flowers, though, I would love to hear what they do for you. Like, what is it about flowers? And, and when you look at them, when you smell them, when you see them, what does it conjure up for you? So, Sylvia, tell us, what do flowers mean for you? I mean, who... When she lived in New York, she said it was just so busy there and people were, they didn't stop to smell the roses. And so she got an idea where she thought, if I painted flowers really, really big, they'll be so in their faces that they can't ignore them. And so 
you know, that's the thing about flowers. They're, they're so small, but that yet they have such a effect on us. Like Sylvia and Maria were saying about how, you know, it brings a smile to your face. It makes you happy. So what else is about flowers that, that do it for you? Henriette, how beautiful. It's like nature and it, it feels like, like you just walk out the door and they're always there. They're um, whether, you know, and it's amazing how some survive even the winter and they're, they're just a representation of, of growth and vibrancy and they're, they're just amazing. So when Elaine asked me to um, learn about this and teach all of you about it, I, and of course, like from at the start when I was like, oh, I'm not so sure, you know, like I, I, I'm, I'm converted yet. <laughs> so the, this last week I realized, oh my goodness, I, I have to prepare for this class. And so of course I got a little bit more serious and I did some research and I thought it's one of these things that is actually incredibly noisy when you um, pound. And I thought, you know, I don't think I want to be doing that in my office, pounding on my desk. So I've had to put together a little PowerPoint presentation. So then that way we can, you can visualize the process of flower pounding without me having to pound it here. And I, I think when, when you're actually pounding, there's actually something really cathartic about using a hammer. So you have to be careful of your, your fingers. <laughs> you know, don't, don't pound your fingers. But for any of you who've ever done flamenco dancing, you know, flamenco, um, one of my, our daughters um, is a avid flamenco dancer. And I've done a few classes with her. And I there's something just really therapeutic about stomping, you know, with your feet. And I think as um, flamenco is stomping with your feet, flower pounding is what you're doing with your hands. You know, it's just like, you know, you're really having a chance to just let it, that energy come through that hammer. So I, I would say the best thing to do is either get a, um, a cutting board or a um, just a sheet of plywood that you just have kicking around as your base. So that way you don't do any damage as you're pounding. So now I'm just going to turn on my PowerPoint presentation here for you and uh, share with you the art of flower pounding. Now, can everyone see that? Yes. Okay. Great. So the art of flower pounding actually originated in Japan. It's an ancient art. So when you think about flowers, you can't help but to think about all the incredible colors that they have. And actually, they have got botanical dyes inside them. And so when you, you know, years before, like, millennia ago before people actually had access to chemical dyes what did they use they used what they had and often it was foods or nature things from nature so it was started in japan and the it is called tataki zomi and tataki means pounding and zomi means dye so that is what tataki zome is. So maybe if I could um, invite some of you, if you wouldn't mind helping do some reading, that would be great. Um, Maria, do you mind reading this for us? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Tataki hammering zome dai, an ancient Japanese art form of transferring botanical dyes from flowers and leaves onto fabric or paper. Great for creativity, stress relief with wonderful and unexpected results. As stomping with your feet in flamenco, you're hammering with your hands. So now the, um, if you don't have a hammer, a mallet will work as well too. And if you don't have a hammer or a mallet, a big rock, 
also does really well too. So whatever you have around you, just utilize that. Now, one of the things I did discover when I was originally hammering onto paper, watercolor paper, I found, you know, the, the colors were okay. And, and then I discovered that you can actually do it also on fabric, which I had never even thought of. And, but one of the things that actually helps you helps the fabric retain the dye better is if you do a process called mordant mordant and um, there's a variety of different ways that you can do it i just um discovered one of the things that you can do is you can soak your fabric in soy milk i haven't tried it myself but they say that is one method that will prepare your fabric for, for absorbing the dye and holding it better. Now, I, this is the, the method that I actually used was soda ash. Now you can buy soda ash, but they came in huge containers and they were also very expensive. So what I did discover is that you can take ordinary baking soda. This, uh, this one was a washing soda, but just take an ordinary, um, baking soda and spread it on a cookie sheet and bake it for three at 350 for about an hour and that works really well also and it's much cheaper because most of us have access to baking soda so when you make your the baking soda ash you can mix one cup of soda ash to one cup of water and you just put your fabric in it and you soak it for 20 minutes. And then you just wring it all out. You don't need to rinse it. And the solution apparently stays forever. Now, the fabric that I put into it was just some, I think this is like a cotton muslin. And um, I put some... Um, plain white cotton into it too and it was really interesting that the color turned out kind of brownish so I, I think it was because of this cotton which is sort of like a beige color but it actually turned the the solution into this light browny color so these are the materials that you would need if you were going to to paper to it to um, flower pound for those of you who might be quilt quilters or sewers you might have one of these mats which you can um, pound on because it also absorbs the the pressure as well too and just a note if you see some beautiful flowers out in public don't go into your neighbors and start picking them so it so utilize what's like maybe if there's been um, uh, a bud that's fallen on the ground, you can take it or you know, just walk around your neighborhood and see, find the different leaves that may have fallen off of the trees. But try a variety of colors and try a variety of shapes and try the different types of plants as well too because some of them actually have a lot more moisture than the others. I grew carrots in my garden this year and I was absolutely surprised when the carrot tops, the carrot green tops are beautiful for um, power, uh, flower pounding. So if you go and buy a bunch of carrots in the store, quite often they come with the, the greenery on it too. And it worked really beautifully. And I also tried it with some sage out of my garden. That is quite a juicy um, leaf as well too. So this is hammer. This is some fabric. Just take some old pieces of fabric. If you have an old t-shirt, that's a great fabric for it too. So use what you've got and just cut them up. And then you lay your flowers down on the fabric. So this is doing on fabric here. So you just lay it down on your fabric in the design that you think you'd like it to be. And then you can take another sheet and put it on top. 
you can do that or you use a paper towel. A paper towel works really well too. And another thing that you can also use is maybe some cellophane or a sheet of plastic. That works well too. One of the nice things about doing it on cellophane or plastic is that you can actually see where you're pounding. Mm -hmm. And as you start pounding, the juices actually do come through. So you'll actually see that you're actually pounding. And one of the things I did notice if you use plastic, because it does, there's no place for it to absorb through. It kind of um, expands, and it, you don't get the nice crispness that you would get if you were pounding on fabric or on a paper towel. So you can see with the sheet on top, and you start pounding, everything starts coming through on the top as well as on the bottom. So you can see. Now, one of the things I did know is that when you start pounding, the one, oh, when you put the flower down, you put it face down on the bottom sheet. And one of the things that I did notice that um, I, I, I'm growing red geraniums and the geraniums are fantastic for, for pounding. And I, I found that they, um, so are petunias, that they actually press so hard that it almost like looks like it's stuck onto the um, fabric. So you could leave it if you want to because it sticks on it quite well. Or if you don't want to, you can just scrape it off. And so here you have the, the bottom sheet is the one that you were pounding on and the bottom is the, um, the other one so you can see it's sort of like making a butterfly you know when you kind of fold uh fold it so you're getting a double a double image so now this ink here is made from acorn caps so maria was nice enough the other day to um drop off some things for me and we were doing an exchange of rhubarb for some some grapes <laughs> yeah. and we ended up missing each other and so fortunately though she saw me while I was collecting acorn <laughs> ah, that's, <laughs> that's what, what I was you were doing, doing. <laughs> so I had my little Ziploc bag filling up <laughs> acorn um cats and in my neighborhood, there's a whole street that has got acorn trees. So I gathered about um, a, a cup full of acorn caps and I brought them home and I washed them, stuck it in a pot with about a cup of water. Oh yeah, I'll show you that and just, I'll, I'll show you how I made it. But this is a little project where you can actually put a little piece of tape over where you don't want the ink showing up on and it's actually quite lovely when you pull off the tape you you see the the resist that you have on the tape but that ink it's amazing that you can actually get that ink by by making it so one of the things i also discovered is even if you're looking at a flower like this was a vibrant pink, beautiful flower that my mom was growing. And when I pounded it, I got this color. So which is, you know, really curious because when you're looking at it, pre-pounding, it's this lovely, vibrant pink. But yet after you pounded it, it was, it was almost like a blue or purple, which I found very curious. So these are my, the greenery here is my carrot tops. And I had another um, branch of prickly little things from my mom's, my mom and dad's garden as well too. They had little red fruits on them and I thought I would pound them to see what happened, but they turned into just kind of blobs. So they weren't very, they weren't very nice. But this is a link to um, a this organization actually did some flower pounding and then they just cut out the fabric to make little clothes, their, their little fairy clothes. So this is kind of like one of the little ideas that you can 
utilize uh, for what you're going to do with your your flower pounded projects. So th these are the acorn caps that I was telling you about. So um, one recipe said that you can use uh, a mortar and pestle to um, crush it. And another recipe just said, just uh, throw it into the pot just the way it is. And I found that I just threw it into the pot the way it is. And I had to cook it for, I think I cooked it for about, I I, I had um, some place to go. So I cooked it for about half an hour. I came back um, later on that evening and the color just seemed like it was still very light. So I turned the stove back on and I had put about two cups of water in. So by the time I was finished, I think I had about a half a cup of ink um, that was produced, but it was much, much darker. So um, I also put in two tablespoons of vinegar and a tablespoon of salt. That was um, something that they suggested to, that you put add it into it. I think it just helps um, to create the, the dye. And you just strain it and then you get the, this lovely color. So this was a piece of cotton that I dipped into the dye um, just to sort of see how it would look. And after I pulled it out um, of the dye, it continued to actually absorb further up. But you can see the lovely colors that you get from just acorn caps. I had no idea that you could do that. So this was one of the little projects that I did with just old pieces of white fabric that I had. So um, I this was done by folding the fabric over and pounding it. And after it was done, I took a felt pen and I just traced over, over, um, I, I was trying to remember where the petals were. And then I tried it with a thicker felt pen and discovered that I didn't like it as much as I liked it with a thin felt pen. So that's something that you can do just to kind of accentuate the, the flower a little bit more. So here's that same flower project that I did and I found an old frame and I tucked it in and then I wrote this little quote and I thought this is so pretty so this is something that is easy for you to do and you get to capture and keep some of these memories of these beautiful flowers so if someone's giving you a bouquet you know rather than throwing them out you know before that they start to um go you know do some flower pounding with it and see what you can create with it so this is a little um another little project this is the one i did with um my geraniums and the carrot tops so i did this one with um, a sheet of plastic. And so rather than it, it showing really distinctly the flowers and their shapes, it's sort of the, the um, liquids in it sort of just spread out. So um, what I ended up doing afterwards was I took one of these little um, marking pens, the fine markers, and you, you, I just sort of traced her around it just to kind of accentuate it a little bit. But I thought it was such a lovely way to make a, a card, and especially nowadays where everything is done online. Can you imagine receiving, making a card like this and being able to send it out to someone? How nice it would be for them to receive it. And these are three great resources that I um, found that I think you may be able to get some really great ideas from. So this is all a part of that PowerPoint presentation that Elaine will be sending out to you. So then that way, you know, all the things that we talked about today, you won't have to try to remember what they all were. So. So that is my share, but I would love to answer any questions that you might have or thoughts or ideas that you had in regards.